Mookie. Yo. Man, we back with another reaction video slash documentary, bro. Bro, we got Roy Jones Jr. Okay. I always heard of him. I knew he was tough, but I never oh, actually. That's best, baby. Actually yes, did it? Bro, yes. He used to knock people out like that? He was tough. So why wasn't he fought? Mike Tyson ain't saying like he was scared. No, no. Roy Jones is the type of fighter that he'll hit you, then he'll take off. He'll, <laughs> he'll beat you to death. Right. You know, just using the ring. Okay. You know Look, man, if y'all new to the channel, we know y'all been requesting this, bro. Sir. Grab y'all popcorn. This is a 42-minute video. Mm -hmm. Mookie. Yeah. Let's get into it, bro. Angles. <laughs> so straight left hand. <laughs> and a half left to go. <laughs> Looks like one of those. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you, that first level. <laughs> first level. <laughs> Roy Jones Jr. is considered to be the last chosen. Before we start, my man got the ask going, give it to you, beat yo. Yeah, <laughs> ask going, mm -hmm. give it to you. Thousand <laughs> one in the world of boxing legends. At the turn of the century, he didn't just knock his opponents out. He made them look foolish. Oh. By hacking the matrix of reality and marching through weight classes for decades, Roy amassed a collection of belts beyond the comprehension of mere mortals. I don't like about and now it is the time to recollect the handiwork of one of the greatest artists who has ever stepped inside the ring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what are you trying to bite him? Roy LaVesta Jones was born in January of 1969 into a family with strong fighting traditions. His father, a Vietnam veteran, mm. made a name for himself in professional boxing in the 1970s. Mm. After becoming a coach, Roy... Here we go again, y'all. What? Behind every good kid, man, the father who take, take their time to invest in their child, those mm. children wind up being amazing, yo. They do, they do. Every time we watch a video like this, bro. Sometimes they mess up, you know what I'm saying? Who you talking about? Don't say like like Marcus Jordan and all that, yo. No, not Marcus Jordan. I said the father think he has a bigger role than what he actually has. You feel right, what I'm right, 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 right. Instead of playing so his role. They, they mess but up. when they wind up being amazing, like the multi fighters we yeah. watch, what right. you think about that? I mean, if you can maintain a certain level of relationship with your father, he know what lanes to stay in and what lanes to stay out of regarding right. you and your career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then, yeah, he could be around for a while. As oh, soon man. as he start overstepping his boundaries and, and, and try to dictate dictate things yeah. to you, you're like, hold up, bro, I'm a grown man. Like, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you yeah. know, it's, 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 it can get a little different. I got you. Roy Jones Sr. focused on the younger generation. He was a strict man and often cruel. Still, it was his idea of movement as life and downtime as death that formed Jones's son into a future champion. Already in 1984, Roy won the U.S. National Junior Olympics. And two years later, the young prodigy took a prestigious bronze medal at the Goodwill Games hey. in Moscow. In his homeland, however, Roy tolerated no competition. Upon winning the Golden Gloves Championship twice and securing himself a ticket to the 1988 Olympics, Jones went to South Korea. The 19-year-old weight class favorite from the U.S. debuted in Seoul with a knockout. Oh, that was crazy. He made it to the finals without losing a single round in the entire tournament. For nine minutes, Jones was outstriking Park Si Hoon, the host country's representative, three to one. Jones has opened up in strong. That left hand would be killing him right now. In the second round, the referee gave Park a standing eight count. Reacted to the right by Park that the Grays Jones. A standing and eight. Yes, a standing eight. After the knockdown, nothing seemed to force. What's a standing eight? Standing eight count is when you're getting punished. Uh, and, and the refs think you about to go down. Yeah. Or you're too dazed and confused. Right. About what's going on because this dude just pummeling you right now. <laughs> right, right, right. He'll stop it. Uh -huh. And stand an eight count, let you get yourself back together. Uh -huh. Then you go back in there. Okay. 
foreshadow the biggest heist in Olympic boxing history. When the judges announced the verdict, the third man in the ring bluntly told the American, I can't believe they did that to you. And the shocked Korean personally apologized for the win. Because he said yes, then he didn't know it, but he was going to get another one. <laughs> Once he fell victim to big politics, Roy went into big time sports. Ricky Randall was the unlucky one to launch Jones's pro career in 1989. Yeah, a month later, Junior deliberately kept the season Stefan Johnson Ooh. unfinished Ooh. for eight rounds. Mm -mm -mm. The battering drill ended only at the last minute of the match. Yeesh! Goodness! Boy, got them hands, boy. As if to make up for his bitter Olympic experience, Roy has not allowed his opponents to last till the final bell three years in a row. Fight after fight, he showed the superiority of talent with zero indulgence to the opposition. <laughs> no, I'm Stop the fight. This was also the time when Roy finalized his signature hands-down style. The mm. abundance of left hook knockouts earned him the nickname Captain Hook. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. In addition, oh, due to his know. outer space footwork and right hand speed, Jones has become known as Superman. In fact, this image has never suited anyone better. With a 15-0 record, Junior started the year of 1992 against a former WBC champion, Jorge Vaca. Junior made his first, and quite a pompous, appearance in the pay-per-view broadcasting world. Oh. Oh. Vaca kept lowering the right arm with every jab, something Roy didn't forgive. In June, Jorge Castro became the first person to finally discontinue the mind-blowing 17 oh, oh, knockout oh, oh. streak. The title caliber Argentinian with 75 career appearances and a granite chin posed quite a test for the American oh, underdog. Anything Junior Come dispatched, here. Castro embraced. By the end of the bout, he remained on his feet to the yeah, amazement of many. Uh -uh. Oh my god, left hand is crazy, y'all. Still standing upright, the Argentinian faced the verdict, which was seen as a great achievement. <laughs> In between the performances, Roy fired his unbearably oppressive father. Mm -hmm. The last straw was the tragedy that happened to his pet. He didn't realize that he was stepping too far on me. One of Roy Jr.'s dogs bit his little sister on the arm. Roy's father took a gun and went over and killed the dog. Jones Jr. went to coach Alton Merkerson, the one he'd known since the Olympics. He fired his father because of what? Because one, Roy Jones loves his dogs. Right. He loves them. It's well documented. He said it countless times. One of his dogs probably bit his sister. Uh huh. That probably one of his dogs did bite his sister. Right. And his father, you know, they from uh, Pensacola, Florida. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, the gun laws down there are a little bit more relaxed. He took his gun out. <laughs> Blew the duck grains out. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when you think about it, what did she do to the dog to provoke him to bite her? You feel what I'm saying? Right. Instead of asking questions like that and You can but you also you also can see how a father can can go black at that moment. Yeah, I can also I can I could do that. But these are my son's dogs. Yeah. Now, before I, I before that. I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ask him, look man, this this got them bitch your sister. Right. I'm about ready to blow his brains out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm letting you know up front. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't. It, it, well, what did she do, Dad? It, 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 it could have been handled better than how it was handled. How, how it was handled. I feel. Yeah. Thanks. Under his guidance, Roy <laughs> met Glenn Thomas. The regime change seemed to have no effect on Junior, who massacred Thomas oh, in the final God. seconds of Ooh. the eighth round. Boy, he's fast, though. He's killing this man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He was throwing everything, wasn't he? Right, yeah. <laughs> that night, uh, Captain ew. Hook was on Beam. fire. And still undefeated, Roy Jones! 
further in December, he went to attempt for a champion title against another prospect, Percy Harris. Mm. Pretty quickly, Roy's opponent regretted not bringing a flying license. One thing I don't like about Woo! <laughs> God, have mercy. I don't fear what you got, but Harris is in serious trouble again. <laughs> Mercy. After that, Percy lied down two more times, <laughs> but he got up by sheer willpower. The denouncement came in the fourth round. Right Bro, he killing this man. Yes, he is. Can Harris make it out of round four? Not without going down. Suddenly feeling no solid ground under his feet, Harris lost the WBC Continental Super Middleweight title mm. to Jones. Roy Jones looked pretty and all that. I always yeah. wanted a green belt. I won all the belts, but I definitely wanted a green one because WBC was hot and it was a green one. Yeah. Regional regalia, meanwhile, seemed below Junior's <laughs> ambitions. Do, uh, In 1993, Glenn became a pass-through piece of a one-act performance for the powers that be. Oh, what a left hook inside by Jones. <laughs> hey, man. Nansen drops his hands Come and here. Oh, this. And Glenn Wolf has had enough. Early night, baby. Hard work, easy money. <laughs> they show the bike so stupid. Yo. And if earlier Jones aroused promoters' curiosity, now he had their undivided attention. Mm. As early as May, none other than Bernard Hopkins deployed a fighting force in the opposite corner. The 28-year-old oh, executioner with a 22 win streak knew how to convince the opponents to never get up after his punches. <laughs> with the IBF middleweight title on the line, Bernard was determined to beat up Ooh. Jones. It was a good fight right here. It turned out, however, that their top-tier finisher had nothing to counteract Junior's outside fighting magic. Clinch episodes were often handled by Roy, too. <laughs> For all 12 rounds, he pierced the defense and stung with gloves like a nimble fencer. The final decision brought him the first significant belt of the Big Four fast, associations. Mm. Later on, he pick you apart, bro. Pick you apart, speed, power. Right. Movement around the ring. Oh man, it's just like he crazy. he. I, I love how he just his involvement with the ring, bro, and yes, how he sir. moved, bro. He 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 ain't in there just just trying to throw it. Just, something. Huh? You were learning something. Well, what you mean, shorty? <laughs> I knock you out. <laughs> John Hopkins would not lose for another twelve years, making his way to the undisputed world champion. And they think he's going to... Captain Hook, in turn, airdropped Thulane Malinga. Oh, good. Straight left hand was spectacular, and this is it. Damn, they killed this man. Upon receiving a left hook, Malinga My spent a couple goodness. of seconds in free fall, waiting for his parachute to open. <laughs> Yes, this sir. is how Roy closed out 1993, chilling in the sports elite. He oh, was now on an gosh. unbelievable streak of 23 wins and 21 knockouts. Still, the boxing world was yet to realize Jones's future potential. <laughs> Good. The next year opened with two dazzling voyages of Captain Hook in the ring. First, he ran over Danny Garcia, who was unable ah, to withstand a good. flurry of punches near the ropes in the sixth round. Ah, come here. Another victim, Thomas Tate, fell in the second. <laughs> but suddenly, Jones got bored. He outgrew the middleweight category, where the challengers collapsed from the mere glance of him. A move up to super middleweight in 1994 was Ooh. instantly marked by a bout with the division's king, James, James Lights Out he Tony. Tough. Tough. James was known oh, yeah. for his impenetrable defense and surpassed Roy statistically with 29 knockouts in 44 bouts without a single loss. Before the fight, there was not even a whiff of courtesy. Right. That, that. 
These dudes stay, yo. The good <laughs> fighters, yo, they stay undefeated, bro. Yeah. They just stay undefeated, bro. I like, bro, so do they go against a lot of other good fighters at they first? They have to. They have to. Mm, so this right here, it was a big fight, man. Oh, yeah, it's a humongous fight right here. Mm. That's all I can do. I got to go out there and do what I got to do to teach that lesson. He can't. Can nobody teach me a lesson? I'm the teacher, baby. <laughs> Jones <laughs> entering as that. the underdog was yet another thing that made the encounter between the two champions even more intriguing. Still, off to a good start, Roy did everything he wanted to to make the world's second man Ooh. in pound-for-pound -pound rankings look merely average. <laughs> I like Jones' sweat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Mercy. In the third round, Junior's teasing move provoked a mistake that Tony will blame himself for for the rest of his career. And yet, the so far reigning world champion could not be crumbled in the ring so easily. Every now and then, James reminded Roy that he is rightfully a top-class fighter. Right. James Tony, because he just got caught with another good left hook. Even though he's sliding and rolling with a lot of them, a lot of them. Oh. 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 Still, Captain Hook was a step ahead of his foe, effortlessly conquering the toughest challenge. And upstairs. Oh. Tony came back with a counter. Oh, Jeez. smash! Left hook to the and new. That's tough. After 12 rounds, the unanimous decision made Jones one of the world's <laughs> best boxers, regardless of weight class. He spent the next one and a half years defending his belt. With no chance of salvation, much less any hope for a competitive fight, the challengers oh were going down in batches. Oh! One of the most spectacular wrecks was Vinny Panzienza in 1995. <laughs> In the fourth, Junior became the first pro boxer in recorded history to win an entire round without taking a single hit. In terms of offense, yes, sir. That's tough. He he hit. Who's this? <laughs> Ooh, how fast he is, <laughs> After a series of knockdowns in the sixth one, the Pasmanian Devil's scalp went straight Ooh. to Roy Jones's Hall of Humiliation. Oh. All his punches is meaningful, bro. Yeah, all his punches got some type of mustard on it. No, what I mean by that is right. his, his all his punches is pinpointed. Yeah, he it seemed like he don't throw too many jazz. He the ain't speed out. Speed is killing me right now. I forgot <laughs> how fast he was, bro. Yeah. That's all you hear. <laughs> but bro, like like I said, yo, don't yeah. you know how some boss is just jack? You know, just and to get move, stick and move. He right. doing some stuff like. Us. Yeah. Us. Yeah, three at you. <laughs> then he'll move. The funny is that <laughs> he be going there, bro. In the summer of 1996, Roy set another record as the first pro athlete to participate in two sports on the same day. <laughs> Thus, a morning basketball game with a $300 prize. Hit one, Roy. Yeah. <laughs> was followed by an evening defeat of future champion Eric Lucas. Oh, he doing, he doing anything he want. <laughs> million dollars. That was to break Roy Jones's hand <laughs> on his jaw. Oh. Okay. Continuing to devalue the ambitions of the world's top tier fighters, Jones faced the undefeated Bryant Brannon in October of 1996. Breaking <laughs> off the moral shack. <laughs> Doing all that to get punished. Bro. I never seen somebody run towards death. Bro, why have my man come out like that, y'all? Yeah, 
He had a lot to prove. You talk a lot of trash. Okay, okay. I remember this fight. You talk a lot of trash. Jackals, Roy went on from extravagance to intrigue and mockingly dispatched the opponent to the canvas twice. <laughs> Beat the butt off yeah. of him, yo. As the beatdown dragged on, Jones asked the ref to have mercy on Bryant, but he refused. And then Jones says, look, you want more? Okay. <laughs> Good. As a result, it took Brandon a long time to recover from a oh severe knockout. Wow. Without a single mistake over five defenses, in November 1996, Jones faced the 39-year-old light heavyweight Mike McCallum. Notably, Roy only agreed to appear in a new category to help Mike make some money. Right. When McCallum forgot about that fact and started pressing in the 10th round, Junior cooled him off with a knockdown. Out of there, McCallum. Uh. Seems just, whoa, just as I said that. Following the 12th. Was doing bad or something? Why he have to uh, make yeah. some money? Yeah, I guess he was. He was doing a little bad. He needed a couple coins in the bank, and I guess he was a well liked boxer. Right, at right, that right. Time. So he was like, right, thirty nine right. years old though. He need to retire, bro. Yeah, he need to retire. Thirty nine. Sheesh. Twelfth one. The twenty seven year old Roy ended up with the WBC belt, a record of thirty four consecutive wins, and the Boxer of the Year title. But in the first defense, already, Jones faced the nightmare of every unbeaten boxer. The undefeated Montel Griffin, with mm. 18 KOs over 26 victories, seemed to experts like a worthy form of opposition. The challenger's plan was to give Junior no room to maneuver. In the opening rounds, Montel actually handled this difficult Ooh. task pretty well, like cornering Jones like he's and attacking strong, the body. Not too much punching. The one is but then Roy went hog wild it's a pretty solid shot. and knocked Griffin down with a couple of hooks in the seventh round. White trunks with black <laughs> and there's a knockdown. It's one of the greatest lightweights. Ooh. By Jones. Talk to me In the nice. ninth, unwilling to drag out the match, Jones rushed to wrap it up. And a couple of left hooks. And Griffin's oh. And Jones lands two punches <laughs> after Griffin's knee was, was so the big, bro. What? That knockdown, bro. But he, oh, he didn't want to get it. Uh, right, bro, that, that was, was a, sweet, bro. Uh, that was a, uh, Roy Jones Jr. cheated for real. He oh. cracked while he was down. Hell, <laughs> you mother. <laughs> oh, so fake. With the victory already being celebrated, Roy found himself deprived of the belt and the cherished zero in the defeat the column. Referee disqualifies the red corner. As the finishing blows went on, the allegedly fainting Griffin took the knee. The slack ref's failure to stop the fight in time and Jones's abuse of oh. power led to his disqualification. So he lost that. disqualified again, just like at the Olympics. <laughs> Probably a devastating moment of my career because I never wanted to have a loss. In the August rematch, Angry Roy did not accept the opponent's surrender. The only thing he was interested in was slaughter. Mm. Jones shook Griffin in the first few seconds. Let me tell you, that Ooh, first level is Towards the end of the opening round, his vicious hook smacked the opponent to the floor. Griffith is benefiting by it. Oh! Goodness me. Uh, and that's that! Jones gets his vindication! So, uh. That night, his signature weapon did not misfire. All groggy, Montel made a few fruitless attempts to get up, but failed to overcome gravity during the 10 count. you ever say I lost? And that's that! <laughs> In April 1998, the 29 year old champion faced Virgil Hill, an owner of a sound 43 and 2 record. Okay. In the fourth round, Jones delivered such a jeweled right hook to the floating ribs, even the audience could feel it. <laughs> That, that was like the kidney right there, I think. Right. Oh. Oh. Kidney the image of Hill squirming in agony won Roy the Knockout of the Year award. Oh, Just three months later, Junior had a unification bout against the WBA champion Lou Del Valle. 
and awkward southpaw, Del Valle was losing the fight clean for eight rounds. Oh my gosh. Five. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. But when victory seemed to be in Jones's pocket, the impregnability of his defense was questioned for the first time. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay. He's fighting. A left fighting. cross kept Roy on the canvas for a short moment. Then he managed to avoid being finished off with no loss. Oh, In the remaining rounds, Junior kept up the good work without slacking up. Uh. A clear winner of the fight, Jones was handed a victory and yet another champion belt. Okay. Mercy. Okay. He pulled this one off. Yeah, he pulled it off. So this is the first time we actually watch. See, this would me. I think, is this the first time he ever got knocked down in his career? I don't know. Well, this is the first time that the main man showed that he got knocked yeah, down in his career. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? So Let us know in the comment section. Um, Yeah, bro. So this is what we like to see out of great fighters, bro. Exactly. Now it's time for him to show up, which he yeah, did. he did. He, and he got knocked out twice. Yep. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. Jones. Is closing the show. <laughs> he hit the ref. <laughs> As he kept raising the opponents to the ground and getting inside distance wins, Roy tallied up the calendar fights totals. Uh. His official record reached <laughs> 39 to 1, whereas in fact, it was 40 to 0. For real, for real, yeah. Yeah. In June of 1999, Jones faced an IBF title holder, Reggie Johnson. The winner would leave the ring as an undisputed world light heavyweight champion. With a big smile and an overwhelming advantage, Junior took each of the 12 rounds. Chopping his opponent down twice along the way. He fast, bro. Bang, he bang, and he caught that punch. He ain't block it, he caught it. <laughs> you know, he actually caught that punch, my guy. That is crazy. Manage Junior took each of the twelve rounds. One minute down, hard right hand by chopping his opponent down twice along the way. Just like one of those jet pilots. <laughs> yo, that's crazy, Mookie, yo. Yeah, that's crazy. For the first time in 15 years, <laughs> all of the division's significant regalia were wrapped around Roy the Great's waist. In May of 2000, Jones put a blush on Richard Hall's cheeks. Superman got all stirred up as early as the first round. He's too slow. <laughs> he slows out of Upon delivering the second knockdown, he was on the way to the close. Oh. <laughs> but having made an allowance for extravagance, Junior slowed down and switched over to inscribing the most mocking performance in his career. Roy's is opening up angles. That's great. He played. Uh, Oh. As the 11th round of the thrashing went on, the Jamaican boxer was barely withstanding every upcoming punch. Why doesn't the referee stop it? But Roy said, managed why to why why turn up the absurdity. The referee only intervened when Hall, trapped in the corner, was about to breathe his last gasp, while the commentators begged for a stoppage. Stop it, Wayne. Come on. This is <laughs> Jesus. Jones, however, was determined to continue. They talking about the rough stop it. The people in this corner should do the towel in, bro. You gonna watch? Yeah, no, that, sometimes that make me sick. You gonna watch this dude get, get to the brink of death before you throw the towel in? Feel me? The referee probably like, man, let them kill each other. 
That's you crazy. feel me? You being this dude on the corner, you should automatically see. Oh, yeah, it's over with yeah. the towel. Like, oh, get in there. Yeah, <laughs> you feel me? This dude out here dying. Continue his humiliation parade against the best boxers of his era. February 2002, <laughs> Yo, Junior. Was that uh, mystical? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Buried the Australian boxer with a 28 0 unbeaten record, Glenn Kelly. This time, Junior was less picky about his targets, with the uppercut in the third not mm. being the mm -hmm. decisive mm -hmm. one. Kelly got up again after a liver shot in the sixth. Against Glenn Kelly oh, good. But all that was just to make a big show for the following round. Unveiling a stunt for which the world will praise Conor McGregor in the future, Jones scored a right hook that finally had the Australian fighter demolished. Uh -huh. Because I was counting him so much, counter punching him so much, he stopped punching. Put your hand behind your back, he'll punch the end. I'm like, who really the pro fight? Okay, put my head behind my back. Uh, 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 pow, there he goes. <laughs> Works. At the end of 2002 and a decade long title campaign, the 33 year old oh. junior easily conquered the Everest in every weight class he had competed in. With 38 knockouts over a 47 in one record, the reigning light heavyweight champion had nothing else to prove within the division. Oh. Jones also found himself at the pinnacle of success outside the ring. <laughs> Hold on! Combining time. Hey, yo, this is a popular a, song. I said this song was like that. Yeah, this is a real popular song. We don't need them niggas, no. <laughs> Finn was on that song, man. Who? That song got millions of views on YouTube. I already, hold on, bro. Most of the time, y'all, when uh, when when sports people, anybody, mostly basketball, because that's what right, we watch, right, right, right. transition into rap, it's usually bad. Right. This song right here was on this a video song, game and yeah, all that. This song was like that, bro. <laughs> my bad. You see my bad? Can't be. I got the got the all got to react to that one day for y'all, man. The <laughs> sport hall musical hits with great appearance in the ring. Combining timeless sport hall musical hits with great appearances uh -huh. in global blockbuster movies. <laughs> God damn it, Morpheus. You ain't never going to change. <laughs> Roy Jones is that dude, yeah, yeah. In March 2003, Roy came up with a new challenge for himself to become the world heavyweight champion. A year oh, prior to that, movie. John Ruiz... He moved up the class. He kept moving up in weight. That's People not good. You don't understand, like, when you move up in weight, you sacrifice certain things. Right, right, right. You sacrifice speed. Uh-huh. Because you're heavier now. Right. You sacrifice quite a few things, um... You might get a little bit more power because of because right. of the extra pounds, but it's it that's not your your body's natural weight. Right, you right, know right. What I'm saying? So it, it gets a little dicey. He's had taken the WBA title from the aging Evander Holyfield. Uh -huh. Despite his modest size for a heavyweight, Ruiz was 30 pounds heavier than Junior, who had been gaining muscles for the whole training camp and showed 193 on the scales. As the starting bell rang, however, oh. Jones' opponent barely kept his panties on. And lands the first big right oh. hand, and Jones lands the left in return. And He's strong, yo. In the mm -hmm. center of the ring. Big right hand by Jones. There's a solid right cross by Jones. Ruiz takes it very well. Basically, Ruiz had lost the belt before he had had a chance to realize it. Oh. He's done him with that. He right. Ruiz will shut him. And now Jones wants to do it again. No lessons learned. He kept taking Junior's penetrating blows, boldly delivered with both hands. Great right hand landed. Place. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's outclassed opponents. He's gone 12 rounds. People will probably look at Roy Jones like he be running. Yeah, that's what the uh, dude on my job say. He'll get on his bicycle and beat you to death. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Like that's his style. See? Right. Right Once Roy added a drop of self love to the audience's obsession, Roy caused a tantrum in the helpless Ruiz's corner. Fight him. Come on, Johnny. Fight him. Fight him. 
<laughs> Keeping control of the heavyweight in all aspects of the bout, Jones was raised to the Olympus of the glorious Royal Division by the judge's decision. Easy, Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones! He became the first boxer to get the heavyweight title all the way from the 160 pound division. Yeah. Mm. To make it easier for MMA fans to grasp the uniqueness of this achievement, that was like Charles Oliveira taking the welterweight and middleweight titles these days, then skip light heavyweight and beat Francis Ngannou mm. right away. Nah. Maybe this was the point when 34-year-old Jones reached the top of the boxing mountain. There was nothing left to conquer. See, there so he killed. Just, so yeah. he killed the heavyweight division. Then. Yeah, he killed that. It was nothing left. He was that middleweight champion. Yeah. I think he was a super middleweight champion. He skipped light heavyweight and went to the heavyweight yeah, champion. Right. So yeah, it's nothing to prove. Why not just you know? Ease on out, retire right, yeah. with, with your brain intact. You that, feel what I'm with boxing. Yeah, but these dudes in love with the sport so much they mm. can't stop fighting. Look right. at Floyd. Yeah, Floyd can't. Floyd almost fifty years old, still fighting. Exhibition but, man. He, this he, fight, he fight bums though. Yeah, I know. I know it ain't for them. Yeah, he but fight it, bums and he still get money in that. Yeah, and I know he got more money than he need right now. Okay. Yeah, that's a fact. You need to throw a million over here too. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, the road ahead could just be a downfall. Despite the circulating rumors about an upcoming fight with Tyson or Klitschko, mm -hmm. Roy decided not to tempt fate and chose to return to his previous weight class. Mm -hmm. He faced Antonio Tarver, who was beaten by Jones in his amateur 80s days. By 2003, however, the impeccable foe had managed to take over some of Roy's left-off lightweight belts during the bout with Montel Griffin. The magic man. Junior's inevitable clash with Tarver took place in November. Right from the start, Antonio went on the rampage and opened up with a few punching series at the ropes. Jones, on the other hand, was unusually cautious and mostly delivered single shots. Oh. The heavyweight yeah. run-in and the subsequent weight cut clearly had a negative impact on Roy's stamina, who wiltered already in the first half of the bout. There it is, Ooh. left hand by Joe. There it is, there it oh, is. Oh, move, Joe. Oh, he stands still. Let his hands go again and give it a shot. I don't know that I've ever seen Jones look like this. As yeah. much trouble as he does right now. Never. In the face of defeat, Junior gathered his last strength and went back to multi-strike combinations in the championship rounds. He's doing what champions do. As the dramatic final bell echoed around, the judges jumped on Jones's board. Well, we got him again. Why you cheat that man like that, yo? Yeah, I mean, uh, the fight was close. Right. The fight was close. It could have went even way for me. For real? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. The 2003 Fighter of the Year Award went to Roy as well, so he couldn't let the bad weight cut situation with Tarver go unresolved. Oh, they fought again. The rematch yeah. took place in May of 2004. Mr. Room, do you have any questions? I got a question. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? Let's not ask questions like that. Let's well, Antonio <laughs> promised to leave no doubt about the winner this time. At first, he ceded the initiative and focused on defense. And there were boos in the house during the first fight from Tarver. hadn't gotten off it. The second round, though, was marked by one of the most shocking strikes in the history of world boxing. Sustained attack. Ooh, ooh. Got him. Not really completely up. And that is the first. Jones may not get up. And he makes it up. Oh, no. Jones may be stopped the fight. Got caught. Big. Eye out. Grace. The left hook in exchange knocked the champion off his feet. Ayo. As Roy managed to get up, he was in no condition to continue. Over Jones's 15-year career and 50 fights, Tarver became the first on the kill list to actually have a live bullet. All in all, the knockout of the year brought Antonio six belts.
In an effort to bring the 35-year-old junior back into title contention, well, Jamaican fighter Glenn tired, Johnson was summoned bro. to the Talk ring. Talk to me, how you oh. feel, bro? Saying like you got something to say, champ. Just retire, Roy. Like, bro, you ain't got nothing else to prove, bro. Right. You didn't dominate it. So what, bro? You got a lot of money around this You got a lot of bread. You know what I'm saying? You can invest that money, open businesses. Just retire, bro. Like, I, Do y'all think the boxers should be forced to retire at 35? Or not? You know, it, it, I just don't... I don't get it why he's still fighting right, around right. this time. This was the time he started losing. You know what I'm saying? Messing up his career. Messing up his career, his record, everything, bro. Before the final rounds, Roy was leading the fight. Roy, Roy, Roy. And he's coming back at Glenn Johnson with serious Yet in the ninth, Glenn found a way to rewrite the fate of the bout and the upset of the year award. Well, he turned it up oh. against... He takes Roy, Roy. Will we ever see Roy Jones? A right overhand to the temple cracked the code in Junior's head. His stiffened body stretched out on the floor. Roy only got up in three minutes, which seemed like a lifetime. Still unwilling to be downgraded to supporting roles, Jones resorted to a gesture of last hope, namely to his father's training guidance. Learn to accept the fact that, you know, we screwed up, how we done something wrong, you know what I mean? After a year-long break, Junior stepped back into the ring Ooh. against Tarver. Okay. Even though revenge in its purest form had never happened, the trilogy's finale came quite racy for both of them. Ooh. <laughs> for the first time in their confrontation, Roy began to punch his way off the ropes. He burst out with pressing moves, too. Oh, we're going back to that old Roy. Great punch by Jones. As for the ending, the fighters played it like an action-packed thriller. Over oh one minute God. only, the treacherous lead changed <laughs> yeah, he said. twice. <laughs> Carver thinks he might be playing possum a little bit. That's right back up. Turning round of their three fights. Carver plays Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. In the end, the spectacular bout went to Tarver on the judges' wow. scorecards. That's how the once untouchable boxing emperor ended the year of 2005 with three consecutive defeats and a 49 and 4 record. For what? Uh, should have had those losses, But bro. what was it that made Jones so invincible, and why did he end up going downhill? With natural agility and reflexes unmatched by anything the world has seen before or since, Roy has always been closer to the virtuoso aspect of boxing. The down-to-waste hands not only complemented the image, but also enabled him to attack from insane angles. Right. But my biggest advantage is my speed. So when they can't keep up with me, then they can't beat me. Junior used the classic jab quite seldom, only resorting to it as a demonstration of activity rather than as a standalone tool. Right. The striking one twos, despite that, crushed. Mm. You heard what he said? And that's yeah. what I've been saying the whole time. Right. Instead of like a, he said like a standalone tool, most boxers that we that I've seen that mm -hmm. we had to just, you know, throw the jab out there just to get it warmed up. Mm -hmm. He more so, he use it. He really trying to throw it out there and warm it up and come in yeah. with his signature. <laughs> you feel me? People just try to fill you out. Right, right. Nah, he automatically planning what's going on. The opponents down with uncanny swiftness. Like one of those Ooh! <laughs> Once concussed badly, the victims had no choice but to escape. Roy threw them to the ropes and then used machine gun punch series to finish them off. He's got Brandon Wobbles. Here we go. Here we go. Jones's main effort in a bout was to create a constant counter punch here. threat in reaction to a single attack. Nine rounds one. But one unrivaled weapon in Roy's arsenal was the left hook that he could catch anyone on. Mm. Junior's fighting tactics have always been built around the lightning fast legs, which allowed him to avoid the onslaught. A successful sidestep secured a position for a shot an opponent could no longer foresee. His key maneuver was the so-called dart, the very essence of which is to change stances during or after the blow. 
Another important element of Roy's approach mm. was to constantly intimidate an adversary with his right hand. Jones, he has not been a good finisher in a long time. This, however, was just a stepping stone to channel the entire body momentum into the lead left hook. Oh. Oh my gosh. The idea of exposing an enemy with the right and springing with the left was Jones's primary goal in a fight. But one thing Ooh. that haunted Jones his entire career was rope issues. With a fighter like Castro, you mm. cannot run. You have to wait till he's ready enough. Even in the best years, Junior would sometimes stagnate and take a shot. Oh. Ooh. As long as he avoided corners and circled around the ring, he remained untouchable. But as footwork quickness left him at 35, Jones went down to giving the rivals better chances at his right. most vulnerable position. Oh, come here. Oh. Woo. Coming back in 2006 after a devastating losing streak, Jones didn't turn into his own pale shadow. But the man's finger was starting to slip off the trigger. Wow. Felix Trinidad had been fighting? knocked down twice. But before realizing what happened in the seventh, he was laid on the canvas again in the tenth round. Nevertheless, Junior failed to finish what he had started. In 2008, the British prodigy Joe Calzaghi became Roy's that, last yeah. hope to regain a high-class belt. With 45 straight victories, Calzaghi was recognized as one of the best... These people out here be trying to do the George Foreman, huh, Jordan? Mm -hmm. okay, absolutely. ...European <laughs> boxers in history, and as the greatest super middleweight in the world. And yet even his knees got bent before Jones at the start. Hey, hey. Junior's mistake lied in the reliance to counter game. Instead of counting on a quick knockout, he let Calzaghi catch a rhythm and turn the tide. And now it was weary Roy to withstand the exact humiliation his opponents had been going through for years. In the seventh round, Calzaghi opened the first cut in the former King of the Rings career, thereby aggravating the man's shaky situation. <laughs> After that, Junior used up what remained of his greatness to make it to the crushing decision. Realizing he stood no chance of surpassing this achievement, Calzaghi left the sport at the peak of his success. In April Smart. 2010, 17 years later, Roy met with Bernard Hopkins again. Again? The fight turned out to be memorable, but not because of the fireworks in the ring. Hopkins' extremely dirty style turned into Jones's cut after a headbutt. Oh. Bull rushes in, bull rushes in, now falls him right into the corner. Places two oh. hit shots, then goes back to that. He took a few hits below the belt, too. Bernard into that sort of... Uh... Oh, oh. But as Roy began to respond, Hopkins put on a little show, collapsing from a rabbit punch. They had a personal beef? Oh, they didn't have a personal beef. It's more just competition. Why he was on some stuff like that? I don't know. Sometimes fighters be fighting dirty as I don't yeah. know what, bro. To the back of the head. In the eighth, he went all the way for the Oscars, first breaking the rules and then crouching down from the return of the courtesy. Rabbit punch, doing everything. Is there another rabbit punch? Yes. The performance was completed by a low blow in the 10th. That's a low blow? Yep. Still, foul play aside, both technical <laughs> superiority him, and judges' opinion favored the more active Hopkins. Hey, <laughs> fight. <laughs> <laughs> This beef ain't over. <laughs> the referee ain't getting knocked down yeah, at all, man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the referee ain't dying there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's hilarious, bro. Hold on, Shorty. Let me see him get it there, yo. Aside, both technical superiority and judges' opinion favored the more active Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> And 
gave the it The final out. low point to the Major League career of Jones, who was then in his 40s, was the meeting with Denis Lebedev. Oh. And yet an unsuccessful fight. fighting visit to Russia in 2011 set a new unexpected stage in the American's fate. Roy's request for dual citizenship was heard at the highest level. In the ring, Junior didn't fail either. Over another five years in action, the freshly minted Russian American scored 11 victories with a single defeat. Notably, Jones's performance has always been a resounding success in the second homeland. <laughs> Of course, his opponent's skills no longer went through the roof. Right. But by that time, Roy fought solely out of love for the art. The 49-year-old ring wizard's honorable farewell ceremony in February of 2018 was hosted by Scott Sigmund. In his last pro bout, Roy looked utterly better than the opponent, dominating both in punching mm. power and speed. Oh, oh beautiful oh. left hand. Sigmund on the run. Final mm, seconds mm, mm, here mm. in this third round. Mm, well, Sigmund, a regional title and a one-sided win were the perfect way to leave on a high note. Jones's final professional record amounted to 66 wins with 47 knockouts and nine defeats. Mr. Roy mm. Jones! That, however, didn't stop Roy from agreeing to a dream exhibition fight against Tyson in November 2020. Jones, 51, and Iron Mike, 54, have gotten into respectable shape for the bout and showcased a nostalgic retirement league match. This shit like two of my uncles fighting at the barbecue. <laughs> Said two of my uncles fighting at the barbecue. Give me that last piece of red. Yeah, <laughs> Junior you mostly stayed last outside day. and fired single shots, while Tyson took on the aggressor role. After eight rounds, the judges called it a tie. Anyway, with over a million and a half pay-per-views sold, the veterans made quite a profit and never went into the ring again. Who won that? <laughs> Deprived of a well-earned Olympic gold in 1998, Roy Jones took vengeance on his own fortune and amassed a collection of belts in four weight classes. As for the iconic record of Jones's exquisite <laughs> knockouts, it can never be surpassed. Junior left the mark on human history outside the ring as well. Besides the appearances on the big screen, he earned a place in the music business, capturing the heart of many with his tracks. With millions of dollars in bank accounts, Roy escaped the tragic destiny of many boxers. To this day, he has not given up on practice or frequent sport-promoting trips, nor on charitable projects and events. The bottom line is the man doesn't regret anything. Roy kickstarted his fans' hearts and did what he loved Ooh. to finally become the best boxer of the 90s and perhaps even of history itself. Jones was faster than a bullet and hit like a freight train. I don't like about Years have gone by, but no one has ever surpassed his fighting brilliance. Oh, oh. Against Glenn Kelly if you like the video and wait for news stories about boxing legends, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Tattoos Brandon. And then Jones says, look, you want more? Okay. That was cool, man. This was absolutely amazing, yo. Yeah.
Shout out to Vogue Sports. They did their thing. Yeah, well, I ain't going to lie. This, this was cool really at good. all. This is really, really good. What I get from Roy Jones, bro, like how you say, um, like why he just ain't stopped. Yeah, he bro. the first. This is the first boxer mm-hmm. that I seen that we react to, bro. That wasn't like real practical about their career. Mm-hmm. He just he just really loved the sport, bro. Yeah, he loved the sport. He, exactly. Even though he should have stopped, mm-hmm. my man really loved the sport. Like, I think he should have stopped, bro. But he loved the sport. It's in him. Once it's yeah. in you, it's in you, bro. Most people fights to get. I mean, of course, he fought to get win. Most people fights to really like. Just up their career or still think they really can do it. Mm-hmm. He say like he genuinely just loved the sport, bro. So, can't argue with that. Can't yeah, argue with facts. that. Overall of this, bro, even though you say it was amazing, what you think, family? Man, I think it was a good sport. Roy Jones is he's one of my favorite fighters. Uh-huh. He's probably in my top ten, not my top five, but you know what I'm saying? I, I always respect his talent and it, he did it with, with a little style that uh-huh. I thought was slick. So nah, yeah, that's, that's a fact. A, Look, man. That's why I like. uh, we gonna definitely get into more boxing, MMA, and fighting videos. We love these type of uh, little documentaries. Shout out to Vogue Sport, bro. You did yes, an amazing yes, job, sir. man. If y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Yes, we sir. love y'all. We appreciate y'all. I'm Nick Dustin. And we out, baby. One.